All right, in uh, this video, we are going to demonstrate some algebraic methods for solving systems of linear equations. I've broken these into, uh, I think, I five examples here, depending on the, the approach that we're going to take. So, our first one I'm going to look at is what's called the substitution method. And so, um, in this example, we already have one equation here that says y is 2x minus 5. That literally means anywhere we see a y, we could replace it with a 2x minus 5. And there's a y right there. So let's take this second equation, 3x minus 2 um, times y is equal to 16, and actually replace the y with what it said the y was up there and make that a 2x minus 5. Okay. We now simplify what we have here, we're going to get a 3x minus uh, 4x plus 10 is equal to 16. Continuing, we see there's now only an x in this problem, so we should be able to solve for that. Negative x is equal to uh, positive 6, and so x must be negative 6. But remember, we're looking for a point where these cross, the one point in the entire plane that works for both of these equations, but we do now know that x is negative 6, and while we're on a substitution roll here, we can take a look at our top equation again that said y, which is the thing we don't now know, is equal to 2 times whatever x is minus 5. Of course, now we know that x is negative 6, and so that must mean y is negative 12, minus 5, which is negative 17. And I want to uh, double check all my answers here. Let's see. I can check them in the second equation. If I do 3 times the negative 6 minus 2 times the negative 17 to see what I get, I get a negative 18 uh, plus 34 and that is 16, which is what it was supposed to be. So my answer is the point negative 6, comma, negative 17. There is my first one. All right, this is uh, my second type of substitution problem here. It, I don't have something that says x equals or y equals, but if I look at this top equation, I'm pretty close to that. If I just add 3y to both sides, it will say x is equal to 3y plus 13. And so now I can take my second equation and substitute in for the x. So I have 6 times uh, what it says x is plus 5y is equal to negative 14, and the x it gives me, or what I figured out in the top equation, was that x and 3y plus 13 are interchangeable. So a little distributive property here, I get 18y plus 78 plus 5y equals negative 14. There are no x's left in this problem. Everything is about the y. So that's uh, 23y is equal to uh, negative, because I'm going to subtract 78 from both sides, uh, 92, I believe. And so dividing by 23 on both sides, I get y is equal to 4. They, of course, won't always work out really clean. Um, and most of the time, if I just made up an example on the spot, it won't work out very clean. Um, this is the y part. I need the x part. I have this top equation that says x is equal to 3 times what y is. Well, I now know that y is 4 plus 13. So that looks like two, oh, y is negative 4. I almost blew that. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 plus 13, which is 1. So it looks like my answer is 1, comma, negative 4. I'm just going to kind of eyeball that. Uh, 6 minus 20, I believe, is a negative 14. So, um, and 1 plus 12 is 13. 
That is definitely my answer right there. All right, so those were my two substitution um, examples. There's always some level of substitution that goes into these things. The whole point of solving a system of equations is to try to get rid of one of the variables, get it down to something that's easier to work with. We're very good. We, for years, have been solving uh, equations with just one variable in them. So if we can make that happen somehow, then that's what we want to do. In the elimination method, we are going to pick a variable that we want to make go away. Um, in this case, I'm going to choose the x to go away because if I look at these two equations, I see I have a positive 4x and a negative 4x there, which means if I chose to add these things together, which is totally fine because the stuff on the left equals the stuff on the right, and adding things that are equal on both sides is going to continue to maintain that equality. So 4x minus 4x makes 0x's, so the x's are gone. Negative 3y plus 2y makes a negative 1y, and 14 plus negative 10 makes a 4, so the y must be negative 4. So now that I know that the y is negative 4, I'm going to pick one of those equations. It doesn't really matter which one. I'll go with this top one, 4x plus 3 times equals 14, 3 times the y, and we figured out the y was a negative 4. So that says 4x minus 12 is equal to 14. And so 4x is equal to, I'm just making sure everything, I agree with that. Yep. Okay. So uh, 4x is equal to then 26, and x must be 26 fourths or 13 halves. It's good. I was hoping we'd get some fractions here sooner or later. So uh, the x is 13 halves, um, and our y is negative 4. I didn't get any fractions until the very end. A little sad. So 13 halves comma negative 4 should be my answer. I could verify that by the second equation. If I took the second equation, negative 4x plus 2 times the y, which is negative 4, and set that equal to negative 10, I'll see if I end up with 13 halves again. Negative 4x minus uh, 8 okay, is equal to negative 10. So negative 4x is equal, whoops, okay, to negative 2, and that gives me an x is 1 half, which means something went horribly wrong somewhere, and I can see where it is. Okay. Good, good reason to uh, check your answers, and I can see the problem was right over here, because my first equation said 4x minus 3y, and I had a uh, plus in there before, just like that. I'm not going to make that same mistake three times. So 4x minus 3y, which would have made this a plus 12 there. And when I subtracted 12 from both sides, I would have gotten a 2 right there. And this would have given me a one-half right there, which matches the one-half that I got on the other side. So my actual real answer is one-half comma negative four. Okay. And let's move on to our next type of elimination problem. Okay. Next one says solve this system of equations like our other ones. I can see that... My y values here, they have the same number in front, but if I add them together, it won't make them to go away. I could subtract them, and that's a valid method. Um, I always find a little bit of danger in the subtraction. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to multiply this whole thing by negative 1 and rewrite it down here. And that's going to give me a 2x minus 6y equals negative 12, 
And now if I add these bottom two equations together, then the y will go away. And I'll get 7x is equal to uh, negative 28. So that means that x is negative 4. And then I'll grab one of my other equations, negative 2 times x plus 6y equals 12. My x is uh, negative 4, so that would give me 8 plus 6y is 12. 6y is 4. y is 4 sixths or 2 thirds. And because of what happened on the last problem, I'm going to check it with the other one as well. So 5 times the x plus 6y is negative 16. And my x is negative 4. So negative 20 plus 6y is negative 16. And 6y is equal to 4. And y is equal to 2 thirds. So I feel very good about my answer now of an x at negative 4 and y at 2 thirds. All right, I got one more for you. Um, this one, if I'm evaluating, looking at this problem, I'm looking, and I don't have something, it wouldn't be easy for me to say x equals or y equals on either of these. I'd be creating fractions when I did that. I also don't see coefficients of my x or my y that are lining up to give me nice numbers that I could add or subtract and make them go away. So I'm going to have to modify both of these equations. So to start with, I'm going to decide what variable I want to get rid of. And I'm going to arbitrarily choose the x as the thing that I want to get rid of. So I want the coefficients of the x to be the same number but different sign. So if I took this top one and I multiplied everything here by negative 3, and I took this one and multiplied everything here by 2. In the top, as I go through then, I get a negative 6x plus 15y. I said 15y, and a pen didn't write it. We'll try that again. Plus 15y is equal to negative 45. And in the bottom one, multiplying everything by 2 there, I would get a positive 6x plus 8y equals 22, and now I can add these two things together. And when I do, the negative 6x and the positive 6x cancel each other out. That leaves me a 0x. Uh, 15y plus 8y is 23y. Um, and negative 45 plus 22 is negative 23. So dividing both sides by 23 and I get y is negative 1. And now I'm going to go back to a safe place like the very beginning. And I've got 2x minus 5 times the y equals 15. We'll try the negative 1 in there. And we'll get 2x plus 5 is equal to 15. So 2x is 10. And that gives me an x of 5. And just to make sure, 3x plus 4 times the y is equal to 11. And my y was a negative 1. So 3x minus 4 is equal to 11. And 3x is 15. And x is 5. Those agree. So I can confidently say that 5 comma negative 1 is the correct answer to that one. Okay. Remember, that represents a point where if I graph these things, they would cross in that place. Now, most of these work out to be fairly nice numbers, but it doesn't have to be that way. This is the advantage of algebra over the graph, is the, the graph will not always show you exactly where those things are. Okay. The algebra always will.